Hey there guys, what is up? So today I'm going to be doing a first impression of the relatively brand new Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. This came out a couple months ago, but I have been dying to try it on myself. I've seen it on clients before and absolutely loved it on them. So I was really curious to see how it would be on my combination skin. I do have a very oily T-zone with my cheeks kind of doing whatever they want. Sometimes it's dry, sometimes they're normal. So I was really curious to see how it would act on my skin. I love a full coverage foundation. However, I don't typically go towards cream foundations because they can be very heavy on my skin. I've tried ones by CoverFX before and I just don't like them. However, this foundation is marketed to have the full coverage of a concealer, the fluidity of a liquid foundation, and the lightweightness of a powder foundation. So that initially drew me in. It is a very buttery finish to the skin as well. And it also has this technology where it's supposed to melt into your skin and be very easy to blend. So by that, Hourglass had me sold. Hourglass as a brand is one of my favorite cosmetic brands. If you are an avid watcher of mine, you guys know that I am a huge fan of their Mineral Veil Primer. It's my favorite Holy Grail primer, and I did use it today with this foundation. I'm also a huge fan of their ambient lighting powders as many of their other products as well. So I was really excited and gung-ho to try out this foundation. This foundation is $46 with it only being 0.25 ounces, whereas my Lancome Tinti Duo foundation is a full ounce and it is $47. So the price is definitely up there. It's not a lot of product. Maybe it's just because it's a cream so you don't need that much product. I'm not positive on that. So I would definitely say that if the price point is a huge thing for you, I would definitely take that into account when you're trying this foundation out. It wasn't for me. I'm a huge fan of Hourglass and I know that I'm willing to pay the price for their products because they're going to usually work out great for me. So that's one reason why I was really excited to try this foundation out. I've never tried any of their other foundations out. They have a hyaluronic tint one, which is great for dry skin. It's more of a tinted moisturizer. And they have the Immaculate, which is a liquid to powder finish. It's great for oily skin as well. According to Sephora.com, this is supposed to be a long wearing waterproof formula that provides 12 hours of color coverage and the innovative formula adjusts to your body's temperature to ever sleep blend into the skin. So hopefully you wouldn't have that cakiness with this foundation at all. I do have a couple breakouts going on right now so we're going to see how it wears on those as well. But I'm really excited to try this foundation out. I'm a huge fan of them so I'm really rooting for this foundation to work. While you're at it also make sure you guys go ahead and give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. I do a lot of first impressions on foundations so let me know in the comments down below if there's any other ones that you would like me to try out. I will definitely be on the lookout for them. But if you're excited to see what my first impression is of the Hourglass Vanish stick foundation then let's go ahead and dive right on it all right so like i said today i'm going to be trying out the hourglass vanish seamless finish foundation stick i have the shade alabaster and honestly this is not the lightest shade the lightest shade is blanc which is super white paler than me which i was really shocked about practically casper very pink undertone though the shade alabaster though it says it has a pink undertone but i think it has more of a neutral undertone you have a lot of nice yellowness in it but I am obsessed with the packaging and the shape of this foundation. I could not get over it. It's very classy and I just feel very fancy using it. I think the design of this foundation though is genius because you really can get into any of those nooks and crannies with this foundation. It's a little bit about this foundation. Sephora.com, it does say that you can use really for any skin type, normal, dry, combination, oily. It has a satin, matte, Net radiant and natural finish. Don't know how that's possible, but we're going to find out. So basically with this foundation, you're supposed to be able to get the coverage of a concealer, but it's not supposed to feel heavy on the skin. It's a foundation and concealer in one. Banished Seamless Finish Foundation Sticks Concentrated Formula is infused with the double the amount of pigment than a traditional foundations for instant full coverage in one application to effortlessly blend into the skin, which sounds awesome and so cool. They do suggest that you use the Mineral Veil Primer with it, which I do love. You guys know I'm obsessed with this primer. I'm obsessed with Hourglass overall, but I love this primer by them. They also have a brush that comes with the foundation, but I did not pick that up simply because I have enough brushes. I didn't want to use another one. But like always, when I do my foundation first impressions, I do one side of my face with a brush and the other side with a beauty blender. And we find out from there how it works. I'm going to do my whole face using the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this primer, which I had the travel size because it's a lot more affordable than the full size. Full size is about like $50 or so. It's very pricey. Hourglass is a brand as a whole is very pricey but I think the travel size of this one is $19 even though I go through it like crazy because I do use it every single day even with the tinted moisturizer. Okay so like I said I am going to be doing this side of my face with my damp beauty blender. Okay so it says that you're only supposed to do like a couple dots on your face. We're gonna see. So I guess that might be too much. We'll see. Oh god. <laughs> we'll see. So I probably put way too much on there, but we're gonna find out and see. Maybe the beauty blender will shear it out a little bit. Let's 
So, I do have a couple breakouts going on my face. Like, I have an entire planet on my chin. So, I think this is a great time to see how full coverage this foundation can be. Yeah, I'm going to need a little bit more. So, so far, the coverage is really nice. Like, you can probably already tell on camera. That is super full coverage. Oh my god. Oh, I like that a lot. And it blends really easily. Like, I can definitely see how it says, like, the technology in it warms up to your skin and really blends it out well. I like that a lot. Now, I wonder if the beauty blender did take away some coverage. That's with the beauty blender versus nothing. Looks really nice. I like it a lot. It just looks like my skin. Like, it really has melted into my skin. It doesn't look cakey, which has always been my fear, I feel like, with cream foundations, that they can look really cakey and heavy on the skin, but it definitely doesn't. It looks just like my skin, just perfected. All right, so now we're gonna do the same out on this side of my face with the brush. I'm using the Sigma F80 Flat Kabuki brush. For a foundation brush I always use. I haven't used it in a while. I mean, I'm so obsessed with using my beauty blender, but I feel like this foundation, I might like the brush with it. A little bit more around my nose. Definitely right there on my chin where I have that huge blemish. It's not easy to blend around my nose. I feel like I like my beauty blender around my nose anyways because it can really get into those like nooks and crannies around my nostrils. But as far as coverage wise, the brush gives so much more coverage than the beauty blender did. You can tell the beauty blender really does eat away at some of the coverage. It's really how it is with a lot of foundations I find. Um, the beauty blender does, you know, since it is damp, it does eat away at more of the foundation. So I am going to do a little bit on my nose and I'm gonna use the beauty blender explicitly with that one, just so it really doesn't look too heavy on my nose because sometimes that is what happens. Really with me and any foundation, I'm also gonna put more on my chin where I had that blemish and then a little bit more over here and use a brush. I go ham with foundation. Like, I want to look like freaking flawless. Especially this supposed to be full coverage foundation. Using the beauty blender on my nose specifically, which I do a lot with a lot of foundations anyways if I use a brush, just because it doesn't look, doesn't sit on any fine lines and it really can get in everywhere. I'm just gonna take the brush over here on this side of my face. As far as the shade though, it's a really great match. Like that, it's a perfect match to my skin. I don't have any lines. I really don't need to even blend down to my neck. My ears though, they're always red. Like that's not odd at all. But I really like the coverage of it and the color's great. Um, and I don't mind that I had to blend my nose a little bit more just because that happens a lot of the time. But yeah, that is the foundation. I really like it. I knew I was going to like it probably just because, I mean, I love everything that Hourglass has done and I've seen it on other clients before and it looks great on them. Obviously, it doesn't cover my huge planet <laughs> on my chin. It is a very large blemish, so I mean, it's not going to be easy to cover at all. But probably just use a little bit of concealer. I don't want to use too much of the foundation just because... You don't get that much in there. I don't want to use this as a concealer where I can go take another concealer and spot cover it. As far as any other small blemishes I had, they did get covered. I had a couple small ones like right here and like one right there. They got covered very easily because they were a lot smaller and they weren't so like risen above the skin, I guess you could say. Yeah, so far I like it. It settles really nice on the skin and I can see how it says it has like a demi matte finish. It's not completely radiant on my skin you do get some kind of glow but it's not matte either it looks like a lot like my long contenty dull finish of that foundation it's very demi matte it doesn't look too matte on my dry patches but it doesn't look too radiant and luminous on my oily skin so i'm really excited to see how this foundation lasts throughout the day i'm going to finish the rest of my makeup see how this works with concealer and setting powder on top of it and i will be right back Alrighty guys, so I'm back. I've gone ahead and finished all my makeup up. The only way I'm wearing my eyes is the Tartlet 2 in Bloom Palette. I'm also wearing the Huda Beauty Liquid Matte Lipstick in the shade Muse. I'm obsessed with these. They're going to be my January favorite. Everything else I'm also wearing will be in the description box down below, so make sure you check that out as well. I'm absolutely loving this foundation. I think it looks stunning. It is in complete full coverage 
literally my skin looks completely airbrushed and so smooth the coverage like I said is awesome it just looks like my skin but better it's very airbrushed it gives a very nice airbrush Photoshop finish to the skin the color is also great too it's not too pink like I was afraid it was gonna be it's really really beautiful it blended beautifully on the skin as well so I really hope that it lasts longer and even after doing the initial application and letting it sit on my skin for a bit as I applied my makeup it did really melt into my skin a lot more and I feel like my natural oils are starting to come out and make it look a lot more radiant so I'm really loving this I only set my face with the Laura Mercier translucent powder so I'm really excited to see how that holds up usually it lasts pretty well for me especially if I apply a beauty blender with it so fingers crossed on that front but I'm going to go into work it is 3 59 so we can go ahead and set the check-in time as four o'clock and I will check in with you guys after I get off later on tonight we're gonna see how it holds up but yeah I'm really excited to see how this foundation lasts I might vlog a little bit see how it looks we'll see but I will check in with you guys later oh what is up everyone how's it going it's pretty late. So it is 12 14 a.m. right now and I gotta say pretty impressed by this foundation if I do say so myself. So like I said before I do have very combination skin. The t-zone on my skin is super oily so it has worn off around my nose and certain areas right here and on my chin definitely so that's to be expected most of the time with me especially around my nose because I, I said earlier you could cook bacon grease on my nose it's that ridiculous. It has creased a little bit right here where I do have some laugh lines. And then, like I said, it has worn off right really around here in this area. Forehead looks great. It does have, you know, more oil shining through, but I, I'm not hating it. Like, it's the foundation's still there. It just looks a little more radiant. Other than that, though, pretty impressed. I'll definitely insert a couple close-up pictures for you guys to see. But like I said, it has worn off around my nose, around my nostrils. It looks a little bit cakey. But it is like a little cakey just right here around my chin and a little bit right there around my nose. But it's to be expected after almost nine hours of wear. Pretty good, I think. I've had a lot of other foundations do a lot worse, especially ones that are not targeted for oily skin. So I'm really impressed by this foundation. The entire time, though, it has not felt heavy at all. It didn't look dry at all either, which I was kind of worried about. So I'm really happy with this foundation. For the price, I definitely think it's worth it. I got a nice longevity out of it, especially at work underneath fluorescent lights all day. It really did stand up to its name. The coverage is amazing as well, and it really is very comfortable. I would definitely probably would recommend, if you have oily skin, using a more matte Fine primer with it. Our last mineral oil primer is great and it is oil free, but if you have particularly very oily the tees on, I would use a more mattifying primer possibly. That would definitely help it a lot. If you have dry skin, I honestly think you could probably pull this off. I mean, I don't have very dry skin, but since it is so creamy and buttery and does melt into your skin, I probably would recommend it for dry skin. I think it would look great. I can see how they really market it to all skin types now, but it looks pretty good. Even in daylight when I was on my way to work, which I wish I would have logged it, but by the time I got out of work, it was dark, so there was no point in me putting in a vlog. In the natural daylight, it looked radiant. I had never gotten this many compliments on a foundation before at work. I was literally getting compliments left and right about how flawless my foundation looked. So I was really happy that people were noticing that and people just commented how great my skin looked, even with this huge <laughs> monster of a zit right here. The only thing I'm worried about is how fast I'm gonna go through this. That's the only issue I have, and I'm like really afraid to roll all the way up because I don't want it to break. So. I will definitely let you guys know how quickly I run through this because you guys know I run through a foundation like especially if I love it I want to run through it really quickly. I still don't know if it's worth $47 just because of the amount that you get in it. But other than that I really do love it and I can definitely see the hype behind it. So if I had to rate this foundation out of five stars I would probably give it four. Five being perfect I would definitely give it four though because there is some things you know I still did get a little bit oily still get a little bit cakey. Obviously I have very high standards when it comes to high end foundation and as I should I mean you're paying almost $50 for a foundation. I'm gonna have some high standards but other than that I absolutely love this foundation and I'm so excited that I have it now this definitely makes me want to try more cream foundation so if there's any out there that you want me to particularly try let me know in the comments down below I would love to add it to my list but that's it for my hourglass first impression let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below also let me know if you guys have tried this foundation I'd love to know your experience with it but while you're at it make sure you guys go ahead and give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for future videos don't forget to hit that notification bell in the down bar below to make sure you're notified for my videos I do upload twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays trying to get better about that let's see if I can stay to it but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys later bye bye